Coming up, Biden's lead isn't as promising as it seems in the South Carolina primary. And later, we see how students at the university celebrated Black History Month in style. Women's basketball was filled with emotion and a win last night. I've got the full senior game recap for you in sports. The last two days in February call for jumping up into the 50s on Saturday and the 60s on Sunday. I'm here for it and more for you in just a bit. All that and more coming up on this Friday morning edition of DITV News. Don't go anywhere. DITV News starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm John Chenoweth. The South Carolina primaries are coming up and former Vice President Joe Biden has taken a promising lead. The Monmouth University poll result showed Biden pulling at 36%, 20 points ahead of Senator Bernie Sanders, who is polling at 16%. However, Sanders may come out victorious due to South Carolina's open primaries. Conservative activists are encouraging Republicans to vote for Bernie Sanders because they believe Sanders is not capable of competing with current President Donald Trump. There's even speculation that President Trump himself will encourage supporters to vote during his primary eve rally tonight. Although some Republicans may vote in the primaries to support Trump, the Democratic chairman, Trav Robertson, believes that some Republicans will vote to protest Trump. He believes that voters disapprove of Trump's anti-Christian behavior and need a change. The South Carolina primaries officially start on January 29th, but voters can absentee vote today until 5 o'clock p.m. With Black History Month wrapping up, many organizations on campus are leaving with a bang, holding final events celebrating the black community. Reposter Asha Lush tells us more. As February is nearing its end, so is Black History Month. African organizations and students on campus have been celebrating all month long with many events, such as the Black Love Series, Karaoke and Cookie Dough, and Roll Bounce, just to name a few. My name is Asha Luch, and I am a reporter for DITV. Last week, I had the opportunity to attend Roll Bounce, a roller skating party in celebration of African culture. There, I spoke with Janelle Bell, a student lead at the Afro-American Cultural Center, and got her take on what Black History Month truly means. Hi, my name is Janelle Bell. I'm the student lead at the African American Cultural Center and it's Black History Month and we're currently celebrating Roll Bounce. The purpose of Roll Bounce is to celebrate the culture that black people have had on skating and how, what it means to the black community. Black History Month is special to me because it shines light on all that black Americans have done. Black history is American history. In addition to speaking with Janelle, I also spoke to Valentine Komen, president of the African Student Association here on campus. She gave me the lowdown on some of the events that occurred this month. Hi, my name is Valentine Komen. Uh, pronoun references is she, her, hers. I serve as the president of African Students Association here on campus. Um, within regards to Black History Month, um, I think we've been able to advocate for this as much as we could through certain events that we've had, like the first event, which we recognized important African names um, that made an impact within our community, um, whether it be at a big scale or a small scale. There will be two more events coming up, including Glow Hard or Go Home this Friday and the Black and Business Networking Dinner on Saturday. All are encouraged to attend and participate in this celebration. Back to you in the studio. Sorry, technical difficulties there. That was reporter Asha. Thank you, Asha. And we'll move on to weather. So I woke up this morning and there was snow on the ground. I was pretty upset, but there's rumors that maybe we're going to get some pretty warm temperatures this weekend. Uh, hopefully Cole can give us that forecast. Yeah, I mean, that snow kind of came out of nowhere, but we have some nice weather coming up this weekend. So looking forward to this weekend, we have some awesome weather. Like 29 is going to be the high today, but we should be good to go by tomorrow. And so we're going to drop down into the low 20s and mid 20s tonight before tomorrow we head off into the 50s. We're going to actually hit 52 as our high tomorrow with a lot of sun. So it'll be a really nice day out there with dropping down to 40. And then before Sunday, we hit a head up to 65, which is kind of unheard of for this time of year, dropping down to 33 that night. And then Tuesday, we're going to look at 44 and dropping down into the high 20s. And Monday, same thing, essentially. So looking forward to the week. Uh, um, I'd like to suggest to get out this weekend and take advantage of this spectacularly southerly weather. Back to you at the Jest, John. Apologize there again. Some 
brief technical difficulties, but Johnson County Sheriff Lonnie Pulbrack is pulling and running for the Iowa House District, the 73rd seat. He has been serving in law enforcement for 35 years and is sheriff for the last 16. Pulbrick says, quote, I'll listen to the people of Cedar and Johnson counties and work together to invest in public schools, make health care affordable, and re revitalize rural communities, end quote. He probably is facing Bobby Kaufman, a Republican, in his fourth two-year term. In his time as sheriff, Paul Burke advocated for mental health and crisis training for police officers, establishing the first training in each program. He believes that his experience seeing how policies actually affect the community will help him make the best decisions regarding the people of Iowa. It's so coming up in sports. We're looking at women's basketball, some rowing. You don't want to hear that from me. Let's toss over to Maddie. Thanks, John. Yeah, the Iowa women's basketball team had their senior night last night against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. And for the final home game of the season, they did not disappoint. The Hawkeye offense managed to shoot almost 60% from the field, something they haven't done since New Year's Eve. But a lot of that was due to the seniors who all had a combined total of 44 points on the night. The Hawks would go on to win 90 to 82. Well, just a really good way to end these seniors, um, their, their career stand, home stand here uh, in Carver. When you think that they've went like the last two and a half years undefeated in their home court, that's simply amazing. I mean, it's hard to grasp that. Uh, but that's how well they've done, what great leadership they've done, how much they've put into this program. Um, I couldn't be prouder of them. Uh. While this was the seniors' final regular season home game, they aren't done just yet. DITV Sports Director Kate Overton has more. Tonight was all about the seniors, as it was Kathleen Doyle, Mackenzie Meyer, Amanda Oliner, and Paula Valino Romosa's last game as Hawkeyes, and it couldn't be any more emotional. We got to our locker room. Our teammates had left some books in our locker that just had um, notes with some memories that they had with us over the past four years. So that kind of got me a little choked up before the game, but I tried to um, just push those emotions to the side and focus on beating Minnesota. And Meyer did just that as she went out and shot a career high, six three-pointers made, finished with 24 points, and became Lisa Bluter's all-time winning senior class. This Hawkeye senior class has racked up 96 wins, but the season ain't over yet, and they're looking for more. We heard 96 and we want 100, so uh, that <laughs> was our it. initial reaction is that we want to get to 100, but it's obviously really special and we wanted to just add to Coach Bluter's winning tradition and just do that for their, our coaching staff, and it's been really special, and yeah, but we're a competitive group, and we want, we want a hundo. And they'll have the chance to get plenty more as they have the Big Ten tournament right around the corner, and then the NCAA tournament right after that. Reporting from Carver Hawkeye Arena, Kate Overton, DITV. I hope the Hawks surpass 100 games. The Hawks still have one more regular season game to go, though, as they travel to New Jersey to take on Rutgers Sunday afternoon. Now heading off of dry land, the Iowa rowing team is just getting underway with their season after being off since October of last year. Head coach Andrew Carter is ready for the challenge and has a few goals in mind. So we want to stay in the upper echelon uh, of teams nationally. Um, and I think, you know, getting ourselves back to the NCAA championship is always on our radar screen. It's a, it's a big ask in any given year, in any given sport, I suppose, and we're no exception. So getting back to the NCAA championships and and, uh, and climbing that ladder a little bit to have a higher finish than, than we had last year. Carter and the rest of the Hawkeye rowing team will be in Waco, Texas for a scrimmage on Sunday. But if you want to see the Iowa rowing team in person, you'll have to wait until April 18th when they will be in Solon, Iowa for their only home match this year. Before I row on out of here, make sure to tune in on Monday for a recap of Iowa men's basketball matchup against Penn State. John, back to you. Thank you, Maddie. The fourth Friday of February marks National Skip the Straw Day. Straws and other forms of plastic cause harm to marine wildlife in many different ways. The adorable sea life can mistake straws for food, or when the plastic breaks down, it produces a chemical that interferes with reproduction. In order to save these creatures, be sure to skip the straw today. If that just isn't possible, there are many other eco-friendly options, such as bamboo and glass straws. Either way, be sure to keep the sea life in mind while you're enjoying your drink today. That's all we have for you on this Friday morning edition of DITV News. Be sure to head over to dailyiowan.com for all your latest news between Monday and Friday. If that is enough for the Daily Island for you, make sure to check out its print edition on Stands Now. I'm John Chenoweth. Thank you, Iowa City.